the NFL just released their power rankings, you know, uh, one through five, or actually more, you know, they went through the whole NFL, but I'm only going to cover one through five. And, you know, I disagree with a few of these teams, but I would probably have all these teams in my top five, but I just disagree with the order. But let me share the order with you. Okay. And then we'll talk about each team. And then I'll tell you in the end where I would put these teams. But as of today, after all the moves here today, okay, this is after Russell Wilson going to the Broncos, you know, Yannick Nagakwe going to the Colts, uh, Deshaun Watson going to the Browns, you know, Ellen Robinson going to uh, the Rams, right? This is after all the moves. Randy Gregg going to the Broncos. This is year to day after all the moves year to day. Okay. Brady uh, announcing he's not retiring or he's coming out of retirement. This is year to day after all the moves. This is where the NFL, through their power rankings, has each of these teams. And, and let me quote one through five to you, and then we'll talk about each team. At number one, they have the Buffalo Bills. Okay. At number two, they have the LA Rams. At number three, they have the Kansas City Chiefs. At number four, they have the Bengals, Cincinnati Bengals. And at number five, they have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And for all the 49er fans out there that are interested, at number six, they have the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Okay, so I disagree with this list a little. Now, I wouldn't have the Bills one. And, and, and if any of you that watch this show when I post you know, videos, I'm big on evidence. I don't believe in arguing from hypotheticals you know, or from feelings. I'm, I, I don't like doing that because we get that wrong so much. I like to look at past events and, and look from that and, and solidify, you know, my arguments from actual events that have transpired in time. Yeah, I just feel like when you watch a lot of these shows on TV, there's so many hypotheticals and you can just get lost in those. Okay. You can make any player in the NFL, the best player in the NFL. You can make any team in the NFL, the best team in the NFL. Okay, if you don't have to point to actual evidence, you know, you can pretty much sell any narrative in the world you want. Okay, so I'm big on evidence. Now, the Buffalo Bills are, are a legit team. Okay, I'm not saying they're not a Super Bowl contender. They definitely are. If the Bills win a Super Bowl, it's not going to surprise me. Okay, they have Josh Allen. Uh, they have uh, Stephon Diggs, one of the premier receivers in the NFL. They, uh, they just signed Von Miller to a massive contract. Kind of interesting given his age. I mean, they paid him bank. But hey, they're laying out and they're going for it, right? And, you know, th this is a team last year that had one of the best defense, no, the best defense in football. You know, they were number one in points allowed per game. They were number one against the pass and they were 13th against the run. They, they had a legit defense. When you're allowing 17 points per game, you're a legit defense. Yeah, you're the best. That was, they, you know, it was kind of between them and the Patriots and the Patriots fell off at the end. So this is a legit team. I'm not trying to go after them in any way whatsoever. They're a secondary, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde. I mean, this is a legit team. Matt Milano, you know, defensively, they're legit. They have a superstar quarterback. They have a superstar receiver. Coach Sean McDermott is excellent. The bottom line, though, is they haven't proved it yet, right? They haven't been able to get past a conference championship game. That's just a fact. So until they do, I'm not going to put them as the best. I feel you have to prove it. Like, if you're going to go in number one into the upcoming season, you have to have either won the Super Bowl or at least reached the Super Bowl. So I would move the Bills from number one and I would put the Rams to number one. Okay, I wouldn't have the Bills number one. They, they have uh, uh, Bills, Rams, uh, Chiefs, Bengals, and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I would move the Rams up to number one. The Rams just won the Super Bowl. Okay, Matthew Stafford had three game winning drives in the postseason. Their defense, I mean, they have the best defensive player in football, right? Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, Darius Williams, Jalen Ramsey, an all-time great cornerback, you know, Coach Sean McDermott, or Coach Sean, uh, Sean McVay. This team is loaded, okay? And I would argue they improved their receiving core. Yes, Robert Woods is gone, but they signed Ellen Robinson, who did a lot more than Robert Woods with less. Now you're giving Ellen Robinson Matthew Stafford. So this team literally just had a parade, literally just won a Super Bowl, and it's almost like they got better. Now, I know they lost Von Miller, and that may be a hit. That may be a hit, because Von Miller and Aaron Donald together were, that was just wrong. It was wrong, and how the Rams pulled that off, I'm still trying to figure it out. I mean, he just signed a $120 million deal with the Bills. They were way over the cap, and they were still able to get Von Miller to come in and play right next to Aaron Donald. You know, that was just wrong. Okay, you have two of the premier pass rushers all time in the NFL on the same team. Now, I, I'm not trying to 
take a shot at them. They deserve their Super Bowl. I'm just saying, man, that was some great GM work right there. That was some great GM work. So these are the defending Super Bowl champions. They have a quarterback who won a Super Bowl. They have an elite, elite receiving core. They have elite defenders. They have an elite head coach. John McVay's been to the playoffs four out of five years. You know, he's never not had a, 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 uh, a winning record. He's had more losses or more wins than losses every year he's been the head coach of the Rams. I would move the Bills out of number one, and I would move the Rams up to number one. At uh, number three, they have the Kansas City Chiefs. And I think I, you know, I would probably leave the Chiefs there. I would probably leave the Chiefs there. You know, they have Patrick Mahomes. Of course, everyone knows who he is. They have Kelsey. They have Hill. And then they brought over from the Steelers, Juju, right? And that's, I mean, the, the Chiefs receiving core just got better. Juju with Patrick Mahomes is a great mix. It just is. If you've watched Juju play and you've watched Pat play, they go together. Their styles mesh. They're going to harmonize. They're going to be able to play off of each other. They're, they're going to have a lot of success together. So the receiving core for Kansas City got better. Okay, the one thing that scares me about the Chiefs is they're losing a player that kind of no one's talking about that I think is a big part of their defense. Tyron Matthew is one of the premier safeties in football, and he's not coming back, and they're not going to pay him. And you're starting to feel the effects now of Patrick Mahomes' contract. What, what happens with quarterbacks is initially they're under a rookie contract. And then when they sign that big deal, it usually takes about two or three years to hit the cap. So they get away with about almost six, seven years of having a low cap hit to a team. They can get away with it for a while, right? Because they have the rookie contract and then they manipulate the heck out of their contract, right? And then some quarterbacks will adjust it right away, even though they sign a large contract. And I'm pretty sure Patrick Mahomes already did it once. But you're starting to see eventually Pat's got to get paid. And you're starting to see now that behemoth of a contract start to affect Kansas City because you know they do not want to let Tyron Matthew get away. You know, I saw a, a message he posted online. You know, he's kind of sad about it. He knows this is a good team. So the Chiefs belong here because they've earned the right. Patrick Mahomes has been to two Super Bowls. Uh, he won one, right? He's won his division. You know, ever since he got there, I mean, the team was winning before, but they weren't winning playoff games. Now that he's there, they've dominated the division, although the division just changed big time. But, you know, ever since he's been there, they've dominated. This team has proven they can win Super Bowls. So I would have them above the Bills. I just feel the Rams won a Super Bowl. I feel the Chiefs have been to two Super Bowls and they've won a Super Bowl, right? And Patrick Mahomes has won an MVP, right? So I, I just feel there's more proven there. I, I would move the Bills from one, number one, but I'm not sure where yet. But I, I would have the Rams one, and I would keep the Chiefs at three. At number four, they have the Bengals. Now, the Bengals are actually a very, very legit team all around except one place. Their defense went unnoticed last year. Nobody really talked about their defense. And if you watch Cincy it, throughout the playoffs, their defense kept them in games. Okay, Their defense finished seventh in points per game allowed, and they finished seventh, uh, seventh against the pass. That's legit, but no one talked about it because Burrow had those two big back-to-back -back games and everyone was calling him the next Brady, right? And no one could actually look at the entire team. The Bengals have a legit defense. Remember, they picked up Trey Hendrickson. Like, this is a really, really good team that has a really legit defense that was in the top 10 in scoring and top 10 in pass defense. And they went unnoticed, right? I'm sure Bengal fans knew they had a good defense, but to the rest of the world, all they were talking about was Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. So this team has a defense. They have a star quarterback, a superstar quarterback. They have a superstar receiver, right? They were legit everywhere except one place. And that was their O-line. Okay, Burrow got sacked 70 times last year, including the playoffs, which is insane. Okay, it's insane. They couldn't protect him. And yet, he still had a good season, right? He still led them to a Super Bowl. So what did the Bengals need to address? The O-line. And they did in a big way. They brought Alex Kappa, right, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They brought uh, Ted Karras. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Ted Karras. Uh, from, uh, he was from New England. He went to Miami for a minute, and then he went back to New England. So they brought Alex Kappa, Ted Karras, or Karras. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. I'm forgetting at the moment. And then they brought in Lyle Collins. Uh, from the Cowboys. So they addressed their O-line in a big way, and that was probably their only weakness or their major big weakness. So the Bengals are going to be a legit team, and they made it to a Super Bowl. 
even this team went farther than the Bills. Think about that for a second. The Rams went further than the Bills. The Chiefs have gone further than the Bills. And even the Bengals have gone further from, uh, than the Bills. So I would put all these teams in front. And I know that drives people nuts. I just feel until you prove it, right, then it's speculation, right? It's speculation. And that's just how I am. Otherwise, you get lost in hypotheticals forever. So I'm not sure where I would put the Bills. Actually, I know where I would put the Bills. I'd put them five. Now, when I put them five, I'm not saying they can't win a Super Bowl. I'm not saying they're not a legit team. I'm not saying they may not, you know, have a parade at the end of this upcoming season. They might. I'm not saying that Josh Allen won't win an MVP. They're a legit team. Okay, They're a legit team that just got even better on defense. And Josh Allen has improved with each and every season. Okay, they have the right coach. They have the right everything. Okay, um, I'm just saying until they proved it. So I would move the Bills to five. Anyway, the list here, it has the Tampa Bay Buccaneers five. And I think I would move the Bucs up to, I, so here's what I would do. I would do the Rams one. I would do the Bucs two. I would do the Chiefs three. I would do the Bengals four. And I would do the Bills five. And that's probably going to drive Buffalo Bill fans nuts. Okay, I just, once again, one through four, what do they all have in common? They've all at least reached a Super Bowl, okay? The, 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 my one through four, not their one through four, okay? Uh, you have the Rams just won a Super Bowl, the Chiefs, two Super Bowls, one, one win, uh, uh, the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, right? They won a Super Bowl two years ago. Uh, the Bengals just got to the Super Bowl. The only team in the top five that hasn't gone past that is the Bills, and that's why I would move them to five. Now, any one of these five teams can win a Super Bowl. Okay, any one of the five of these teams, they win a Super Bowl. I'm not going to be shocked. I'm not going to try and have an argument with you. I, when I moved the Bills to five, I'm not trying to disrespect them. I know they're a good team. Okay. Uh, according to this list, they have the Bucks at five. And like I said, I would move them up to two. Last year, remember, remember, right before the playoffs, Brady lost his one and two receiver. Mike Evans was not his number one or two receiver last year. If you look at yards per game, Chris Godwin was number one and AB was number two. Okay. What happened was AB got injured early in the year. And when he came back, right, he had that one monster game. Then he walked off the next game, which was crazy. And Chris Godwin got injured right before the playoffs. If you look up Tampa's stats, Mike Evans was third in yards per game. The difference between him and Godwin and AB is he was there for every game. That's why he had more total yards. But if AB had played every game, and if Chris Godwin had played every game, they both would have finished with more yards. So when Tom Brady went into the playoffs, he went without his number one and number two receiver statistically. That's what happened to him. And they still just lost by three points to the Rams. And I know there were a bunch of fumbles and crazy things that happened, but they were right there. Like it's, it, it happened, right? We can go back and try and rewrite history or we can accept the results. They were right there. And he was playing in that game without his number one and number two receiver. What did the Bucs do? They just signed Leonard Fournette today. They brought over uh, Russell Gage from the Falcons, who I think is a huge pickup. I think he and Brady are going to go together really, really good. So you have Leonard Fournette back. You have Russell Gage as, as a slot receiver. You have Mike Evans. You have Chris Godwin, who I think is going to come back and have a monster year. Chris Godwin is going to be on a mission this year. Brady has one of the best receiving cores in football this year. A definitely top three, you know, he's on a mission, right? You know, you, you know, and, and spare me that he didn't win a Super Bowl. No quarterback wins every single year. Okay. I hate when people hold Brady to that standard. In 2018, when everyone was saying he was washed up, he threw for more than 4,000 yards. His team went 12 and four and they made it to the playoffs. And it's like, Brady's washed up. Sorry that he's not winning a Super Bowl every year. Nobody does that. Just given his history over the last 10 years, he's been money more times than not. Okay, more times than not. So given what the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have done, right, where they were able to get to last year without their top one and two receiver, and what they've done this year, bringing in Russell Gage, re-signing Leonard Fournette. Uh, I know Rob Gronkowski's still out there. The rumor is he's going to sign, right? And I still feel that Tampa needs to address their secondary. They finished this year 21st against the pass, but they did finish fifth in points allowed per game. That's the one weakness for Tampa has always been their secondary, even the year they won the Super Bowl. 
They finished 21st that year, but at one point in the season that year where they won the Super Bowl, they were 27th against the pass. And if you remember the year they won the Super Bowl, that secondary could be had. You could throw on them, and it was frustrating if you were a Bucs fan. So given what Tampa has done and the moves they're making and the potential news out there, and this, you know, I would put them too, even without Julio Jones news. You know, if that happens, obviously I might, you know, I'm, no, I'm going to leave the Rams there. They won the Super Bowl. But I just feel Tampa, as long as everyone stays healthy, they're one of the legit teams in the NFL. They still need to address their secondary. They need to address their secondary. And me moving them up to two is because of their quarterback, you know, that receiving core where their defense finished last year and the moves they're making. It's just a respect factor. So final list for me is Rams won. Okay, they're the Super Bowl champions. They won. And it looks like they've only improved. They still have to sign Odell. I would have Tampa Bay too. Okay, this was a team still made it uh, uh, all the way to against the Rams, lost by three points. And they did that without their one and two receiver in terms of yards per game. At number three, I would have Kansas City. You know, it's Patrick Mahomes. You know, he's been to two Super Bowls, won a Super Bowl, won an MVP. At number four, I would have the Bengals. They fixed their one weakness, which is the O-line, right? They brought in three different players, Lyle Collins, uh, Ted Karras, and uh, uh, Alex Kappa from the Bucks. And then at number five, I would have Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, you know, and the Buffalo Bills, Von Miller, Matt Milano, uh, just because, like I said, they haven't pushed through yet. And they're, they're the only team in the top five that hasn't pushed through. But it seems like this could be their year because they're throwing around $120 million for a player that I think is 33 or 32 years old and Von Miller on a five, six year contract, something like that. I don't know. I guess he's playing until he's 40. But it sounds like they're going all in on it. So this could be the year where they can also say they've been to a Super Bowl or they've won a Super Bowl. Okay, so those are my top five versus the NFL Power Rankings top five. Hey, hey everyone. Thank you for watching SP Sports today. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. This way you are notified when we post new videos. Also, if you have a moment, leave a comment and check out our other videos.